welcome to another video from the events calendar. My name is James and in this video we are going to talk about short codes. Short codes are a convenient way for you to embed code or assets or basically any sort of functionality uh, without actually having to mess with the code itself. So plugin developers and theme developers can basically write a whole bunch of code and then you can implement that code uh, by putting in a simple word or phrase somewhere on your website. If you're using Events Calendar Pro, there are a bunch of short codes that we have developed that allow you to do things with your calendar that you otherwise wouldn't be able to do without some complex customization. So really excited about this. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of these awesome short codes. Now for the short codes to work, you will need Events Calendar Pro, which you can find at our website, theeventscalendar.com, under the Products tab and Calendar. Once you've downloaded and installed that, you can go ahead and create a page or a post or an event and start adding some short codes to it. But before we get to that, I do want to point you real quick to a very helpful resource. Um, if you're on our website and you go to the support knowledge base section, we just do a quick search for short codes. I want to make sure you're aware of this short codes overview knowledge base article. This has a pretty exhaustive list of all of our short codes that we can use. And if you click on one of these links, you'll get more information about that specific short code. Now in this video, I'm not going to talk about all these short codes because that video would probably be a couple hours long, but I am going to talk about some of the uh, most popular short codes that I think you'll find interesting. And then once we're done with this video, I encourage you to come to this knowledge base article and start playing around with some of these short codes and just see what's out there. So now that you're aware of this handy little article, let's go ahead and hop on over to a website. Now this is a uh, pretty fresh install of WordPress and we've got a bunch of um, events in here that we're going to be able to display with some awesome short codes. So I'm just going to go ahead and create a new page and I'm going to call it short codes. And we'll go ahead and start with our most popular, most used short code. And it's pretty simple. We're just going to type tribe underscore events. Now you'll notice short codes always start with this uh, opening square bracket and then end with a closing square bracket. And there's usually some sort of word or phrase inside. And sometimes, and we'll look at these, there are some attributes that allow us to control the short code even further. So, uh, but before we do that, we're gonna go ahead and start with just this simple short code here. And I'm actually going to, instead of putting it in a paragraph block, I'm actually gonna search for a short code block. If you're using the classic editor, you can just paste a short code into the text editor and that should work just fine. But for the block editor, I like to use the short code block. Let's go ahead and publish that and take a look at the front end. Okay, so we can see that we have a calendar here. Now, it is in mobile view, which is something I did on purpose. I wanted you to see this because this does come up in support sometimes. Uh, people don't understand why their calendar is showing in this sort of narrow mobile view. And the reason is because this theme, the template of this theme is actually creating this narrow column in the middle. And what we can do is go back to the page editor and come over here to template. And I'm going to choose the full width template. And we'll update that and then we'll check out the front end again. Okay, now you can see that it is displaying the full desktop view. So I just wanted to throw that in there because it does come up a lot. You know, honestly, some themes don't have different templates like that that we could choose from. Unfortunately, uh, depending on your theme, there may not be anything you can do about it. But at least in the case of this theme, all we had to do is switch the page template to a full width template, and then we're good to go. So this is basically what the default calendar looks like in list view. If we actually hop on over to our calendar page, it basically looks exactly the same, right? And so the benefit of this is the default calendar page. Um, you really don't have any way to really customize the full layout of this page without getting into um, customizing some PHP template files and whatnot. But if you use a short code, and let's say you're using some kind of page builder like Elementor, um, you could build out a whole page just the way you like it with the Elementor page builder. And then you just drop this tribe events short code on that page and you have your calendar exactly where you want it. And so that's that's one of the things that makes short codes very useful for people. It gives you a lot more options for customizing. So I'm going to hop on back to our short codes page. And I'm going to go back to the editor. And we're going to take a look at some of the attributes uh, that we can put inside tribe events. So um, I'm actually going to hop back over to our article that I mentioned. And I'm going to find tribe events right here and click on it. 
and scroll down a little bit and we'll see we can do all sorts of things if you don't specify a view then it will just be whatever view you have set as the default in settings for this example as you could see our default was list view but you could choose uh, to show any view month list day photo week etc um, if we scroll down a little bit more we'll see we have even more options we can choose to only display events from a particular category now this is useful for people because with our plugin you can really only create one calendar and we've had a lot of customers ask about creating multiple calendars and while you can't create multiple calendars you can uh, give the appearance of there being multiple calendars on the front end of your website if you display a calendar that only shows certain categories okay um, so instead of having different calendars you basically have one calendar on the back end but you can display that calendar on the front end um, in different ways using these short codes and these parameters. So uh, a lot of people find that very useful. You can, of course, add some days that you want to show events from. We can choose if we want to show the search bar or the filter bar. If you have our premium filter bar extension installed, you can choose whether or not you want to display that. We can display events by tags. We can uh, limit the number of events that will show up. So you can see here months events per day equals five, events per page equals six. So these have uh, some really cool options for how many events will actually display. And then just a quick note about quotations, you'll see that uh, you don't want these little curly quotes in your short code. You want the plain old straight up and down quotes. So that's, a, that's really it for the tribe events short code. Now I am going to go ahead and show you this in action. I'm gonna put in a couple of these parameters. Uh, we're gonna put in a category parameter and then I think we'll go ahead and also try limiting the number of events that we'll see by using an events per page. So let's go back over here and go events per page equals, and I'm just going to say three. And we'll update this. Okay, and it's actually only showing two because <laughs> we have a very limited number of events actually installed on this website. It would, I probably should have created more events for, for the purposes of this demo. But let's go ahead and go back. And just to make sure the shortcode is working, I'm going to change it to events per day one. OK. Now there's only one event. So I just wanted to show you that the events per page actually does work. If you were to have you know, 1,000 events, but you only want to show you know, the most recent three, you can use that parameter to do that. And let's go ahead and try adding a category parameter. So I'm just going to click into this event just to find a category. So this category is called generated. Let's go ahead and try that. Instead of the events per page, I'm going to say categories equals Okay, now the only events that it's showing here are events that are in the category of generated. So we'll click on this event and you can see, yep, generated. And if we look at the second event, it's also in the category of generated. So um, that's all I'm going to show you for the tribe events shortcode. Again, go ahead and reference that knowledge base article to see all the different parameters that you can use to fully customize that shortcode. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and move on to the next shortcode now. And that shortcode is called Tribe Event Inline. And what this shortcode allows you to do is actually embed a single specific event anywhere on a page or a post, pretty much anywhere that you can put in a shortcode, you can embed an event, which is really handy in case you want to showcase a specific event for whatever reason on some part of your website, you know, maybe in the sidebar of the main page, whatever, anywhere. Very handy, very useful and versatile. So now we do need one bit of information in order to use the shortcode. We need to know the ID of the event, which is actually very easy uh, to figure out. So if we go to our list of events in the back end, what we can do is just hover over an event and if you'll notice, I can't point my mouse to it because if I move my mouse right now, it'll go away. But if you're looking at the very bottom of the screen right now, you will see the URL of the link that we're hovering over. And inside that URL, you can see it says post equals. And this one says 2952. 
that is the ID of this particular event, okay? And so you can hover over any one of these. Let's hover over cooking class sushi. Looks like that is post equals 679. So we need to remember that number, 679. And I'm gonna go back to our short codes page. And we'll go into the editor. And I'm going to say, I'm gonna type 679 before I forget. And tribe underscore event underscore inline ID equals 679. And we'll do the square bracket. And just to make sure that I got this short code correct, I'm going to reference our article that I mentioned before and tribe event inline. Yep. Perfect. Let's go ahead and publish this and take a look. Okay, now as you can see, there's nothing showing here. And the reason for that is in order for this particular shortcode to work, you do need to actually include it, the information that you want to display. For instance, do you want to just display the title of the event? Do you want to display the title and the featured image? Do you want to display, you know, the uh, excerpt uh, of the description of the event, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so again, I'd like to show you these things because these things come up a lot in support. And so I want you to see them firsthand here. Um, so you, you'll know what to expect. If you add this particular short code and you go to the, to the page and the event isn't showing up, it's probably because you forgot to specify what information you actually want to include. So what am I talking about? Well, let's come on back over here to the article and you'll see right here, we have an example of title and these are curly brackets instead of square brackets. And if we scroll down, we can see that there are other things like title colon linked. So the difference here is if we use this short code, it will display the title of the event, but clicking on it won't do anything. If we use this example, it will display the title of the event. And if you click on it, it will take you to that event. Scroll down some more. We can see that we can add the excerpt. We can add the start date of the event, the start time, end date, etc. cetera, uh, thumbnail. So the featured image, all sorts of stuff. So I think I'm actually just going to copy all of this right here. Go back to our shortcode editor, and I'm going to paste it in here, and then remember to change this ID to 679. Now let's take a look. There we go, now it's working. So we have the thumbnail or the featured image. We have the title, which is a link. So if I click on it, it'll take us to that event. We have the time, the start time, the start date, and the excerpt for a description of the event. So very cool. Like I said, you can use this short code anywhere on your WordPress website. You could add it to widgets, um, sidebars, footers, pages, posts, all sorts of things. So very cool, very handy um, for featuring specific events. Now, the next few short codes that I want to talk about are kind of special. And the reason they're special is because while they do still operate as regular short codes, we actually also turned these particular short codes into uh, Gutenberg blocks which means that you can actually implement these um, even easier. You don't have to go to the knowledge base article and find the short code and paste it in and all that. You can actually just search the Gutenberg blocks and just click on the block you want and it's that easy. So let's go ahead and open the editor and see what I'm talking about here. Okay, so if we come here to the plus sign and I'm just gonna search for event, see these four events related blocks. Now, again, these are actually pulled from our short code. So we could just add the event list short code or the mini calendar short code, similar to how we did the other two short codes. But for these four, we can actually just choose the block and that's it. That's all we have to do. There's a few options that we can choose in here once this finishes loading. Like we can choose how many we want to show, which is a parameter in the short code. Again, we could type, you know, events per page five, or we can just type in five here in this block. We can choose if we want to display the price, the venue of the events. If there are no upcoming events, we can just completely hide this widget altogether. And so this is just a really cool way to make short codes, which are already pretty easy, even easier. And we do plan, I think, on adding some more of our short codes as blocks um, as we move forward. But right now we have these four available for you to use. So let's go ahead and just save this and see what it looks like on the front end here. So here's our first event. We use the inline short code, and then here is our block that we use. So again, you can add this block anywhere else that you can add blocks. 
Uh, widgets now allow you to use uh, blocks so you can add these four short codes very easily to any widget area on your website. Um, you can add these to post pages again, pretty much anywhere. So very handy and very versatile. So I think that's it for this video, guys. Again, uh, we've only scratched the surface um, on short codes available to you with the events calendar. Definitely check out that knowledge base article for the full list of all the awesome short codes that you have available to you. And of course, don't hesitate to reach out to us on the support part of our website if you have any questions about how to implement these short codes or if the short codes aren't working. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you found that useful and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. See ya.